And he shared with us during his podcast a little bit about molding the culture of your security team around the organizational goals. And you said something very interesting. You said that a lot of that is based upon absorbing the mission or the goals of the company that you work with into your daily mantra of how you behave and how you protect and how you defend in your corner of the C-suite or your corner of the organization. So I'm gonna ask you, how does that work? Yeah, so much could be said on that. And, and I think that goal is by focusing on things that only we as cybersecurity leaders can do. What's one of those things? One of those things is we can be bilingual. We can learn how to speak tech and we, we've probably already done that. But we can learn the language of business. What's most important to the company? What's in the mission? What's in the vision? What's in the goals? What's the company trying? Why are we even here? Most companies, okay, every company I've ever worked for in my long career, just because I'm old, is none of them worked in the business to do cyber. They worked in business to do uh, good, good for their shareholders, good for the community, nonprofits, et cetera. That's why the company exists. How can we on purpose, something that only we can do as cybersecurity leaders, make sure that we can align the daily activities of the teams we're privileged to lead so that they can connect, not magically, mystically, but say, oh yeah, the reason why I'm patching that Windows server is, and then just copy paste the words from the mission. The reason your company is there or the vision, what the company wants to be when it grows up, grab that too. So that it can be very clear to say, I'm important, what I do matters. The company's not here for cyber reasons. The company is here to do whatever this company is to do. And here's my role, here's my contribution. Just imagine, what would it look like if the very first day of the year, let's just say the beginning of the year, everyone goes to work on January 2nd. Let's just say they go physically into your building on January 2nd. We hope that happens for everybody who that needs to happen for. Or maybe it's remote and that's fine too. But what if the very first time they logged in or the very first time they walked down the halls, they knew very clearly what they were responsible for and how it connected to the mission of the company. And they were very clear on the things they needed to do to achieve you know, the, a high bonus, their full credit at the end of the year evaluation, giving them the whole runway to do that work, almost a whole year's worth of time to say, yeah, what I do matters. And here's how it helps our company go further and go faster. Yeah, that's a very interesting perspective because it's on the surface, such a simple statement. And yet we are, especially now, bombarded with information in our daily lives in every aspect. And our job is no different than that, right? I mean, we have so many things that detract our attention from the main purpose of our presence in the company. And sometimes it's easy to get sidetracked. And so I think what I'm hearing you say is, you know, it, keep it simple and, and remember the reason that you are there, the job you're there to do, and the effect that your contribution, as you put it, is going to make to the overall team. Absolutely. It makes the leader better. It makes the team better. It makes the company better. Everybody wins. And it doesn't cost anything at all. It doesn't cost anything at all. I think the CFO, especially of your company, would appreciate that. Yeah, he's a tough boss to work for. Yeah, he sure would. Well, thank you for that, Russell. 